Hello guys, now I will talk about peritone slurry cellulites and abscess. Peritone slurry cellulites and or abscess is caused by bacterial invasion through the capsule of the tonsil, leading to cellulites and or abscess formation in the surrounding tissues. The typical patient with peritone slurry abscess is an adolescent with a recent history of acute tonsillopharyngitis. Group A streptococcus and mixed oropharyngeal anaerobes are the most common pathogens. With more than four bacterial isolates, perapsis typically recovered by needle aspiration. So most of the time it is polymicrobial. Regarding clinical manifestation, the most common clinical symptoms are sore throat, fever, trismus, muffled voice and dysphagia. On physical examination, Asymmetric tonsillar bulge with displacement of the ovula is seen. An asymmetric tonsillar bulge is diagnostic, but might be poorly visualized because of trismus. Regarding imaging, CT is the most helpful for levering the abscess, but ultrasound might be used to differentiate peritonsillar abscess from peritonsillar cirrhoids. And this, the use of ultrasound avoids radiation exposure as well as the need for sedation that CT often needs in children. Regarding treatment, treatment includes surgical drainage and antibiotic therapy effective against the group A streptococcus and anaerobes. Surgical drainage might be done through needle aspiration, incision and drainage and tonsillectomy. Needle aspiration can involve aspiration of the superior, middle and inferior aspects of the tonsils to locate the abscess. Intraoral ultrasound can be used to diagnose and guide needle aspiration of a peritonsillar abscess. Approximately 50% of peritonsillar abscess resolve after needle aspiration and antibiotic therapy, and a small percentage of these patients require repeated needle aspiration. The rest 5% with infections that fail to resolve after needle aspiration require incision and drainage. The feared but rare complication is rupture of the abscess with resultant aspiration pneumonides. There is a 10% recurrence risk for peritonsillar abscess. Tonsillectomy should be considered if there is failure to improve within 24 hours of antibiotic therapy and needle aspiration, history of recurrent peritonsillar abscess or recurrent tonsillite, and also complication from peritonsillar abscess. This is all about peritonsillar cirrhosis and abscess. Thank you for watching.